Let's head it down to Brandon Parker and Ryan Dietrich with tonight's Flames TV postgame show presented by Original 16. Original 16, a great way to celebrate things done well. Welcome inside our Flames TV Live postgame show. It is brought to you by Original 16. Enjoy great taste and remember to celebrate things done well with Original 16, official beer of the Calgary Flames. Brendan Parker alongside Ryan Dietrich tonight. Calgary Flames and Edmonton Oilers, uh, they go toe-to-toe -to -toe in their final battle of Alberta of the season. And uh, I thought uh, lived up to exactly what you'd expect in a battle of Alberta. Had a little bit of that intensity, had some highlights, had some saves, had some hits, and, uh, and more importantly, had some goals as well to determine a result. Unfortunately for the Flames, they end up on the wrong side of it here tonight. 4-2 the final. And uh, maybe one of those nights where kind of similar to what we've seen in recent times, Winnipeg, maybe one of those examples also saw it, you know, a couple of times uh, down the stretch here for the Flames, just games that they've played really well in, haven't found a way to win, but um, maybe feel like they could have uh, deserved a better result here tonight. Yeah, you put it perfectly there. I think the Flames feel like they uh, deserved a better fate, like you said, but I, I think over the f course of the first 40 minutes especially, I mean, mm. the Flames really took it to the Oilers five on five, so this is a, a disappointing result considering what they were able to manufacture offensively. Uh, Calvin Pickard played quite well for the Oilers back there, a backup goalie that's starting to build some confidence going into the playoffs for them. Um, you know, but for the Flames too, it's interesting because it's a night where we always talk so much about special teams when it comes to the Battle of Alberta, knowing the vaunted Edmonton power play and the success they've had. Yeah. Uh, Calgary gets two on their power play tonight, which is great, and it kind of sets the table for you going into that third period, even though you do have to climb back from a bit of a deficit, but ultimately, it's the Edmonton power play that gets the winner and really uh, proves to be the difference in this one. So, as you said in that third period, uh, you, you, you play a great game, you find a way to give yourself a chance down the stretch, but you just can't take penalties against the Oilers, and tonight it certainly proved costly. Yeah, and it's interesting because both teams go two for six on the man advantage, but uh, you look at the first couple of power play opportunities, I think the Flames had the first three looks with the man advantage, yeah. and then you know weren't able to find one early on, and then uh, obviously Edmonton does on their first power play look, and uh, maybe sets the table, and I know both teams finish one, but maybe just the timing of them too can yeah. be a difference maker in for sure. games too, right? For sure, and, and we see it so often too with, with Edmonton. I I, I know statistically there's nothing that says that the Oilers tend to get more power plays in third periods, but when you're generating the types of looks that they tend to get when they have guys like Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisettle, Evan Bouchard in this case ended up uh, yeah. you know, being the difference maker on this night. That's a lot of weapons. So, you know, ultimately speaking, you talk about timeliness. Theirs were more backloaded in this hockey game, but six is just far too many against that team. No question about that, and uh, that's where we end up with uh, six on either side, a couple of power play goals for each team, and a 4-2 final for the Oilers. Let's just take a look at how it all goes down here tonight, and a couple of milestones over the course of this as well, which you'll see from a Flames perspective, but it starts a little jostling in front of the net uh, between uh, Jacob Markstrom and Zach Hyman. They're fighting for position in front. Markstrom trying to find some room to see through, and Hyman trying to do his role in front as well. A lot of uh, juice, a lot of, lot of that over the course of the night, yep. actually. A lot of drawing back and forth. Uh, didn't really seem to affect Markstrom too much on this play, but this is that Edmonton power play we're talking about. Leon Dreisel, that's his office. How many goals has he scored from that spot this year? And you know what? Credit to Markstrom, too. He gets across. He gets I, over, yeah. I think probably a little frustrated with himself because he gets a good piece of it, probably feels like he should have stopped it, right. but that's a perfectly placed shot. It's funny because we saw that uh, almost similar type of setup later in the game that he did get across early yeah. enough, and that was Bouchard going downhill. Nugent Hopkins set that one up. But uh, here, uh, of course, is the second Edmonton goal. That one comes in the second period. This one at even strength and a big goal from their fourth line. Connor Brown gets his fourth of the season. You know, obviously, we start here taking a look. The turnover is what sets this back in motion. But I thought Dennis Gilbert getting back in the lineup tonight, he plays that pretty well, actually slides and gets a piece of it. But from there, it's almost like a little bit of chaos. Everybody funnels towards the net and maybe undetected in the play. Matthias Janmark, that little poke pass back into yeah, the slot. Keeps it alive. Yeah, allows Connor Brown to skate right into it. Yeah, and uh, maybe a couple of fortuitous bounces on that one and then the game winner, which you'll see coming up in a moment. But first, here is the fight back for the Calgary Flames, and it starts with the man advantage. And 
Yegor Sharangovich, and that uh, is an absolute bomb. That is a missile from Yegor Sharangovich. That's number 30 for him on the year, too, which is a great number to hit for him. Leads the NHL in goals among players, uh, you know, with their new teams this year. So, you know, that's a nice feather in his cap. But, uh, you know, also from the team perspective, too, you love to see the Flames start to, as we talked about off the top, find their confidence on the power play, move it around the perimeter. Andre Kuzmenko has found a little bit of a home in that soft spot, kind of off to the side of the net allows Sharon Govich to skate into it. And that's a, a formation we haven't seen much from the Flames this year, but that's a great place for a shooter to start sniping. You kind of got to buy a little bit of time for him to get down in that spot, and they do exactly that just to get it. And then the second goal is very similar in terms of the way that they work this around and where Sharon Govich ends up getting this pass, uh, which ends up getting tipped in by Nazim Kadri, but uh, obviously another heavy release from Sharon Govich. And I think Jonathan Huberto might be the biggest beneficiary there because if that wasn't off the shaft of Nazem Kadri's stick, that might have plunked him coming around that other side. But as you said, wait for that play to develop. Again, I love to see that from Andre Kuzmenko, and he sort of has that shimmy, those head fakes. Uh, he has options down there, and, and that's just a great shot again from Sharon Govich. And for Nazem Kadri, 25, planting himself in front of the net where he needs to be. So tied 2-2 as you head to the third period, and, or as we continue in the third period, and then this is that power play we talk about. They get it uh, about the midway mark of the period, and uh, it's dangerous, and this is fortuitous in that, you know, you're putting your body on the line to block a shot, and unfortunately it, it ends up redirecting it. Yeah, you said it. I mean, that takes a ton of courage for anybody, and Kevin Rooney in this case, to step in front of an Evan Bouchard slap shot. Uh, we didn't get the radar on that one, but this is a guy that routinely hits them upwards of 90, 95 miles per hour. So, I mean, what can you say? You're, you're defending it quite well and just a bad break there that happens to find the top of the net. And then late stages, uh, the Oilers seal it here and uh, a puck that just slips away from the Flames on the offensive side of things and then put home there by Ryan Nugent Hopkins and uh, the empty netter ends up uh, being his 18th of the season and ends up being our final 4-2 here. Uh, tonight, the Edmonton Oilers, and you see uh, that second goal, obviously, kind of a scramble in front on a broken play. Nice job initially there, breaking it up by Gilbert, and then obviously the third one that goes off of yeah. Kevin Rooney. And yeah, that's going to happen throughout the course of a game, but um, those are the ones that, uh, you know, sometimes, despite all the good work, and, you know, I think you look at that end of the second period, I think there was probably almost two consecutive minutes inside the Oilers' offensive zone. You don't get anything to show for it, and then, unfortunately, you got to start the third down a man. Yeah, and that was an interesting as you pointed, part of the game, because that was a point where the Flames were really starting to lean on Edmonton. And yeah, I, really. Looking at the stats after, too, I think the high danger chances were somewhere in the neighborhood of 9-4 to four in favor of Calgary. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, at the same time, like you said, you're applying all that pressure, but you don't get the payoff of, of ultimately tying the game and maybe setting yourself up for a different-looking third period. Yeah. So on that note, credit to Edmonton, because the third period was, I thought, their best. They defended the Flames a lot better. They were a little bit tighter on the gaps to prevent the transition game and the rush attack. Um, and then in the zone. There weren't many of those situations where we saw that sustained offensive zone pressure that led to some of the five-on-five -five success in the opening 40. Right. Uh, all right, let's go inside the locker room. Let's get some reaction from tonight's hockey game, starting first with Jonathan Huberto. He had a helper in this hockey game here tonight. Uh, I thought, you know, we, we battled hard. I thought we deserved better tonight. Uh, you know, I think it just shows, you know, they got a good power play. And they took advantage of that, and you know, we came off short. But I thought our effort, uh, we were. I, th I thought we were the better team tonight. So. What do you think of Connor Zary's uh, debut at center this season? Yeah, it was good. I think. Uh, I mean, I don't think we play one shift in our zone, so it was. You know, it was a fun game. I think to, to play in the offensive zone, we made some plays. We had some opportunity. We, we got to capitalize, obviously. Obviously. But uh, yeah, Zars was good. I think he was, uh, you know, in the middle, keeping the puck, making some plays, and Hansi as well. It was really good, you know, battling in the corner, uh, getting guys to him, you know, and uh, making time to the other guys. Can I say something about this group that you know, there's like half a dozen game laps. We guys are mathematically eliminated, and you went out and you said the effort was there because you didn't work. Yeah, I mean, I think most of the year, you know, the effort is there. Um, you know. Like I said, I think it's it's not easy, obviously, the position we're in. But, you know, the guys are, are showing up, and it's good to see. Obviously, you know, a bigger game against Edmonton. You know, we don't like each other and rivalry. But, you know, I thought, you know, it's it sucks, you know, coming short like this uh, with a game. You know, it would have been nice for us to, to feel better after this game. I imagine he's not going to want to talk too much about it, but we did request Yegor because he got to 30. I mean, we're supposed to see him this year. Oh, yeah. Uh, what, what, what do you want to do? I mean, he's just, you know, he's a really good player. He's a smart player. Um, 
I know he shoots the puck extremely well, and you can see, I mean, 30 goals, it's quite an achievement. You know, it's, it's, it's good to see. And, uh, you know, he's got to, you know, worked hard, and, you know, he played a little center man, you know, tonight on the wing. So, he, you know, it's not easy. He didn't play center a lot, you know, his career, but he, he had to take that, and I think he did a good job with that. And uh, two goals for power play tonight. Uh, what's working lately for you guys on the power play? I think, I mean, execution is way better. We know where we can be. I mean, we we've been the same unit for a while now, so I think we, you know, we're moving the puck well. I think we have a lot of looks, and you know, guys, uh, guys are scoring. All right, you heard uh, it come up briefly, but Connor Zary makes his uh, NHL debut, I believe, at uh, the center ice position, at least for any extended or starting a hockey game, and uh, does so along with Jonathan Huberto and Dryden Hunt. And uh, they, by the way, stood out immediately, started this hockey game, and then started with chances and really built their game, it seemed, throughout this night. Yeah, and that first clip that we saw there, that was literally right off the opening faceoff. So there's been a lot of talk over the last couple of days. Connor Zary was a healthy scratch in Winnipeg about you know, the deployment of young players and him in particular, how do you handle them? Well, this was a reset for him, and it wasn't punitive from head coach Ryan Huska, and we're seeing exactly why. He gets back in the lineup, and we're seeing all that enthusiasm, that energy that he's been known to play with all season, and, and the hands, too. Finding chemistry and, and, and playing a new position and playing upwards of 16 minutes tonight, I mean, this is exactly what he was talking about. So. Um, the move to center is a fascinating one because we're in that point in the season now where, you know, players are auditioning for jobs and for Connor Zary, who's really established himself as a National Hockey League regular this year. It's about where is he going to fit come training camp next fall. And the Flames do need somebody to step up in that center position. And uh, you know what? He's been plug and play all season. And to see a guy like Dryden Hunt come in and, and play alongside him and feed off that energy too, I mean, this all bodes well for the Flames, but in particular at a guy like Connor Zary to take that message well not feel like he was being singled out and punished for a couple of bad games. He reset it properly and he came back tonight and looked more like the Connor Zary that we saw over the you know first 60 plus games of the season where he became one of the NHL's top rookies. Well, it's funny because I yeah, spoken spoke to uh, Dryden Hunt after the first intermission, just asked him about you know what they were seeing in the offense. He said it's you know kind of interesting because it seemed immediate, obviously as you mentioned right yeah. off that first shift, but never really having played a ton of extended time. Uh, with either of them, and yeah. uh, and obviously look pretty good. Sometimes it just works that way. It does. And uh, you know maybe Zary gets a lot of credit for that. I like what you said though about the response and just how he took that. Obviously handled it, and uh, and then responded tonight. And, and also just to throw that in there too, I think it was a few days ago he was asked about playing center ice, and I think for Zary it's yeah. been you know a lot about just you know making sure you're doing the right things and playing where you need to. And um, you know he kind of alluded to just whatever's needed of him. Uh, but interesting that it comes you know maybe less than a week after that yeah. conversation and he gets his first chance at it and look really comfortable up the middle for sure here tonight. And you know what? He might not be the last one. I, I yeah. would be curious actually to see if Martin Pospisil gets a look at some point in that position as sure. well because, again, we're talking auditioning time. Yeah. Uh, on the note of chemistry, no practice. That's another fascinating thing about this too. They did get a morning skate together, but uh, yeah. as we watch it all unfold, there wasn't uh, much in the way of uh, consistent line rushes to build off. So yep. that literally happened as soon as they dropped the puck tonight. And, and the only thing we saw this morning to glean from was, uh, you know, what we usually see is some of the veterans leaning on uh, guys like Connor Zary and offering them a few tips. And I saw Kevin Rooney working with him in the face-off circle. Little things like that to help get a guy ready for uh, what was a big night for him. Speaking of big nights, uh, Yegor Sharangovic gets his uh, 30th goal of the season. First time he's reached that milestone in his NHL career. And obviously, as you mentioned, uh, the leader uh, in the NHL among players with new clubs. So Sharangovic up to 30 now on the season, had a goal and a helper tonight. Here he is. Yegor, what does it mean to you to score 30 goals? Uh, first, you know, you think it's about game. And it's a little bit tough lost. I think we... We can win this game, and we had a lot of opportunities to score a goal, more goals. And like for me, it's I I don't know. It's like it's hard to say. It. Like it's nice, but you know, it's when you scored and then team lost. It's like it's not happy. Did you? We were talking with Jonathan. <coughs> he really liked the effort from your group. He felt like you guys went out there and played hard and, 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 and played well. Did you? Did you like the effort from the team? Yes, yeah, so I think it's everyone played for each other, and you know, how like I said, we had a, a lot of opportunities to score goals and more goals, and you know, we needed probably like a little bit step up in the PK because last couple of games it's not really good, and I think it's just a little bit 
where you should play a little bit better in the game. What did you think of how your team did on the power play today? Uh, it's tough first period because we like it's hard. We had hard time on uh, like break breakouts, but second period like and scored in a third is a little better. I know you, it's awkward to talk about the thirty goals, but at the end of the season, do you think you look back and and say, yeah, that was that was something I'm proud to accomplish? Uh, I don't know. Seriously, it's it's hard question. Like I don't know what to say. Great. Have you enjoyed playing in the Battle of Alberta this season? Four games in? Yeah, it's really nice. You know, it's a lot of emotional. It's really emotional games and always like full ring, you know, and good fans. I know. Thank your fans for supporting our team and now we're playing for the fans. Going to make it a fun atmosphere tonight in a season where you're, you're, you're not chasing the playoff spot, but a, a fun game tonight to play in? Yeah, of course. Like I said it's full ring, like our fans, and it's, it's really nice. Okay, thank you. Original 16, a great way to celebrate things done well. Flames Post Game Live brought to you by Original 16. Enjoy great taste and remember to celebrate things done well with Original 16, the official beer of your Calgary Flames. 4 2 the final here tonight. Edmonton Oilers and Calgary Flames will uh, obviously got some reaction there from Yegor Sharangovich. Hard to celebrate the 30 goal milestone uh, in a loss and understandably so, uh, but obviously a big one for him nonetheless in his first season as a member of the Calgary Flames. Let's hear uh, now from the head coach, though, Ryan Huska at the podium. Uh, let's listen to what the head coach had to say about tonight. What's your assessment of tonight's game? I thought we played really well five on five, and I thought our power play was, was good tonight after the first stretch in the first period. Um, I really liked how we played five on five. We made a couple mistakes, and they ended up in the back of our net. What was the thinking with having Connor Zary play at center tonight? Um, just We needed a line that can play against um, McDavid, and Sharon's got the ability to skate, so we decided to put him up there. And Connor's a centerman. Um, Hasn't played there all year, and after missing a game, it was a tough, tough ask of him. But I thought he did a really good job tonight there. Jim Matt Coronado out there playing a little bit of center as well. Maybe seeing a little bit with that fourth line too. Tonight, some, taking some, sh taking some faceoffs maybe. Yeah, maybe if someone got kicked out, he wasn't um, playing in the middle on purpose in those situations. So it might have been one faceoff that he did end up taking, but that wasn't on purpose. Yeah. Is, the, is the Zeri move aimed at, you know, potentially down the road? You yeah. might take a look at that and thought might, just might as well start it today. Yeah, well, and I mean, if we want to, we had to find a line that we felt comfortable playing against McDavid. Um, and Sharon fits that mold. So it opened a spot for a centerman. So it, it was, was just that simple. It wasn't like we really wanted to try Zari at center all year. No, we, we've talked about it, and this just kind of gave us the opportunity, but it wasn't something that, listen, if we didn't have to try to match Michael up against the McDavid line, um, Sharon would have probably played center tonight. But I thought um, both did a good job. I thought Sharon did a good job in that role, and I thought Connor did a good job in the role we asked him to play tonight too. Can you keep Connor at center now for – much of the rest of the season just to keep trying it? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, it's, it's an option for us. I mean, he was much better tonight, um, whether that's because he missed a game, but you noticed him tonight. He was back to his, his normal way, and that's something that we want to keep seeing from him, whether it's because he, he got a bit, a bit of a boost from playing in the middle or he wanted to um, just get back to his normal self after missing a game. I'm not sure, but I, I thought he did a good job tonight. We go back to like the very early days of the season. It, it seemed like you guys were trying to figure out what to do with Yegor, Sharon sure. Govich, and, and where to place him. And now here he is. He's got 30 goals. I mean, mm -hmm. it's been a pretty great first season. Um, just how impressive have you been with his ability to adapt and, and sort of learn on the fly? Very. I mean, he's he's uh, like listen. We knew the type of guy we were getting when we traded for him. We knew there was speed there, which is something that we felt we were lacking and we needed to have. He's got some size, but he also has a skill set. Early on, we had a hard time finding. A spot that worked with them like we thought it would work with Elias and Hubie at the beginning of the year it didn't for whatever reason um, so we, we moved him around and he spent some time in that fourth line center role um, before he got himself really going he scored a goal on the road I remember and it kind of kick-started him where he got one the next night again uh, and I don't think he's ever looked back from that but what he's done is 
he's he's done a really good job of, of starting to play with confidence both sides of the puck. So now he knows he can be a difference maker on any given night, and, and we see that most nights. We're really, really pleased with what he's done. Coach, what did you make of Jacob Markstrom's play tonight? It looked like he kind of got tangled up a little bit with Hyman on the first one. Yeah. I thought on his evening? Um, I, I thought he was fine. You know, it, they scored a, one was a deflection or that high that stick the late one, empty net goal, and the other was a power play goal too. Our penalty kill's got to do a better job at the end of the day. So um, whether the power play is a good power play or not, our penalty kill has to do a better job. But to answer your question, I thought Jacob was fine. You mentioned uh, your own power play. The last little while you guys have seemed to really have that group clicking. Mm -hmm. Is there anything different that you feel like they're doing or is it just execution? I think, well, execution for sure. That's one thing. When they get the puck in the zone, they seem like they have uh, a little bit more urgency to make plays. The passes are on the tape right now. And um, when they're feeling better about themselves, it seems like it, you know, it's fluid. And that's what it is right now. So they've had some, made some good plays with the puck, and they've ended up scoring some goals over the last probably nine games now. It's been on a good tear. What did you think of the movement on the second power play goal? It looked as if you guys were basically working below the face-off dots the whole time, and Andre was working a lot behind the net. What did yeah. you make of the movement? Well, he's, they're starting to do that a little bit more now. Andre's good below the goal line. Um, sometimes you'd like, I want him to shoot a little bit more than he does, but... Um, he's so quick that he, he's able to suck penalty killers into him, and then he finds the open man. And I thought we did a good job of kind of keeping it on the outside, which isn't something you want to do all the time, but eventually they worked on breaking him down. So they, they set up two nice plays tonight. They were nice goals. Not to go back to Connor, but obviously in this situation, we see him playing center for the first time. Yeah. Typically with players in that position where they're young and they need to learn how to develop at that position, would you rather they play as many games as they can at center or – are you okay with flip-flopping them on the wing or center? I kind of just want to know your general philosophy with developing a young center. Um, I, I'm okay with flip-flopping them. I think the it is one of the hardest jobs in the NHL is to be a young centerman. And I think that's why you see a lot of times when the higher-end guys or the high draft picks break into the NHL, they're often put on the wing because um, it's hard. They have to do a lot of heavy lifting down low in their own zone when their bodies aren't physically ready for it. Um, Connor now, has, he's played a number of years pro, so we feel like he's able to handle it. Um, but I don't think there's any issue flipping a guy back and forth. You'd like to have 12 centermen on your team if you could. Then you have the option to move guys all around. So Connor is one of those guys for us, like Sharon is now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, flexibility and uh, and obviously you look through the lineup, that's key. And uh, especially for this team moving forward, nice to know that there's some options and, uh, you know, specifically, I think, you know, he, Huska talked about the reason why they made that move here tonight and, and that being more about playing against McDavid. And that line was very effective in that role, especially five on five. Obviously, they get a couple of power play markers, which doesn't uh, fit that mold. But sure. that Backlund, Coleman, quietly here tonight because it doesn't come up, uh, come up a ton. Yeah. But that line, you know, does what it always does when they, you know, McDavid and Backlund have had some really good head-to-head -head battles in this building before, and, and, and Back seems to really thrive in that, that role, that opportunity. He does, and, and it's funny you say that, too, because, again, it's one of those nights where Connor McDavid puts a couple of two, points two on the assists, board. But, yeah. I mean, you know, for the most part... Quieter, five on five. Yeah, yeah. It, it speaks to the, the way the whole game went, really. This was a... This was a if we're being honest, this was a game the Flames dominated five on five. There's no question about that. And a big piece of that, the only way that you control a game five on five against the Edmonton Oilers is if you have a line that has the ability to yeah. quiet 97 out there. So, uh, yeah, another great night for him. It, it feels like this is something that, as you said, doesn't get the headlines, but he performs so well on a nightly basis when 97 is out there. And you know what? Also, credit to Yegor Sharangovich, too, because that was yeah. a big impetus to this as well. We're mm -hmm. celebrating the fact that he has 30 goals, but again, the fact that he's been such a Swiss Army knife for this team all season, and yeah. the fact that he's being put out there in defensive responsibilities now, too, really speaks to the, the season he's had and sort of the ascension he's had as a member of the Flames organization. Well, and it all boils down at the end of the day is to, uh, to trust, and uh, they obviously trust him in that role to get the job done. I want to just, yeah. if we could just, I know we kind of put together a pack. This game, you know, as we always expected to have some edge to it, a little <laughs> bit of that intensity, and uh, this Battle of Alberta kind of wrapped up that way. And I think, again, something that we're not – talking about a ton here but it was kind of showing throughout the course of this hockey game there yep. was some jabs some late uh, you know 
after scrum whistles or after uh, whistle scrums, I should say, and just uh, you know a little bit of that edge that we've come accustomed to seeing. And it was nice to see it. The building was alive, and and we got to watch it. Yeah, I loved it. Everybody loved it. I mean, this was a game where the Flames brought their their lunch pail to the rink here, and it showed early on. I mean, the the physicality. I wouldn't say it was the most physical game, but as oh, you're yeah. alluding to, this is the stuff we're talking about. And Rasmus Anderson, he was involved all night. He loves this stuff, yeah. though. There's no question about it. So. Uh, the sticks are flying. But you know what I love about that clip, especially, too, is the fact that Rasmus Anderson is involved. He's one of the team's leaders. They didn't let this get the best of them. They never lost their cool. They never put their no. team in a situation. Like, we talked about the power play. You didn't hurt your team by engaging no. over the line. So, uh, you know, really good to, to show up against a team that, uh, you know, I mean, this is the rivalry, so you're going to get under each other's skin. And, you know, for a guy like uh, Rasmus Anderson especially, I think this one is right up his wheelhouse. Yeah, and uh, you see at the end there, Dennis Gilbert uh, making sure he finishes his hit on Corey Perry, his first game back in the lineup after missing 13 straight. So uh, kind of seizing that opportunity along with Braden Pahal on that third pairing, and then uh, Mackenzie Weger leading the way in the hits category too, and I thought he was physical again. Also all involved the in that yeah. after whistle stuff, yeah. no question. <laughs> Something we have not to be, uh, would not ever be surprised to see as uh, his season has indicated he's been right in the thick of it all uh, season long. As for tonight though we'll put the uh, bow on this one and look ahead for the Calgary Flames it was a one and done homestand here tonight as they hosted the Edmonton Oilers unfortunately on the wrong side of it uh, despite a pretty good effort and a, a very entertaining hockey game between these two teams as we so often see when they meet head to head that'll do it though for the season series four and then done between those two teams up next for the Flames it's the California Road Swing their last extended road trip of the season in San Jose on Tuesday night and then it'll be Los Angeles and Anaheim to wrap it up. Back on home ice, two home games left here at the Scotiabank Saddle Dome this season. Next up will be on Sunday, April the 14th, an early 6 p.m. start, Coyotes and Flames. Thanks for watching Flames Post Game Live, brought to you by Original 16. We'll see you on Sunday back here at the Dome.